Hello, my name is Eric Whitney, and I am the Education Pioneers Fellow for Boston After School and Beyond for the summer of 2011. My project focused on looking at the Boston Navigator website and the data it contained, and this is my report on my findings as well as recommendations on how to improve Boston Navigator. Boston Navigator has a lot of data. In order to make sense of it all, I had to find ways to make it easier to explore the data. Here's an example. This word cloud represents word use frequency among all the program descriptions in Boston Navigator. The larger the word, the more times that word appears in program descriptions. Rather than read through 250 pages of text, this image allows much faster interpretation of what kind of programs are in Boston Navigator. This is the Boston Navigator website. It allows families to search for opportunities for youth, for summer and after school programs. It is also where program providers go to enter and share data about their program. It serves as the primary interface for both audiences. So who are the key stakeholders that make Boston Navigator successful? First we have the program providers who are giving information about their program into the Boston Navigator website. In return, they're hoping to get more youth signed up for their programs, as well as reports and information on the after school and summer sectors. We also have the families who are looking for programs for their children, and hopefully we are capturing the program feedback of their experiences. And finally, we have other key stakeholders and funders who are providing the resources necessary to make Boston Navigator as well as programs run, and they are interested in looking for reports on the sector. But the system doesn't end with data collection. Only after collecting this data and doing a thorough analysis can we then start to answer some of those critical tough questions, such as what are the best programs, where are the underserved neighborhoods, and where is money being spent? These questions appear simple, but do require a lot of analysis to make sure we are making fair comparisons across all of Boston's programs. While we're talking about data, let's take a look at the challenges of working with data. This is a set of maps found from the City of Boston website showing all the different ways neighborhoods are broken down into different areas. So when we talk about Boston neighborhoods, that's a challenge as there are not common definitions. With Boston Navigator, however, we're working at the address level, which allows us to break up our information into any demarcated regions as necessary. In this case, as you see, we are going to primarily be using the neighborhoods that correspond with U.S. Census data, but we can break that up into any other combinations we need to, such as you can see in red the circle of promise, and we can do comparisons of data inside and outside that circle. So how much data is in Boston Navigator? When talking about data in Boston Navigator, we need to understand that we speak about programs being run by different organizations, and those programs may be happening at different locations across the city. And here you can see we have a total of 520 organizations across 651 locations. Now we've broken programs up into after school and summer, and you can see that we have a total of almost 2,000 programs running around the year and that totals up to almost 100,000 student slots. When we talk about a student slot, that's an individual opportunity for a student, and we may have students who are taking advantage of more than one slot. Now we can take that data and broke it down to an even further level of granularity. Here we have listed programs by their reported type, and this gives us an indication of what kinds of programs are most frequently found in Boston. Note that programs are allowed to report more than one program type, so while the absolute numbers may not be useful, the relative positionings of these different types does give an indication of what is offered. There are other ways we can look at the data, such as visualizing it on a map of Boston. This map shows the total number of youth engaged in one year and shows where you will find Boston youth in programs. So the larger the circle, the more students served at that location. The larger circles indicate around 2,500 youth served. As we have no way to uniquely identify participants, the same youth may very well be represented in this data more than once as they engage in multiple programs. But this does give an indication to where the students are going for a program. Another 
Here's another way to visualize some of the information in Boston Navigator. Dosage is a measure of how much time youth spend at different locations across Boston, as calculated from the hours the program runs and how frequently it occurs per week, per month, etc. This gives us an idea of where the most activity is. You may note that there's a lot of places where circles disappeared entirely compared to the previous slide, and this highlights an issue with data quality within Boston Navigator. Many after school and summer programs have not reported this information to us, which means we are not able to do data analysis with it. Now let's say we want to compare how many opportunities are available for youth across Boston, across different neighborhoods. In that case, we need to adjust for the relative youth populations. So we are going to be using a term referred to as slots per youth, which is simply taking the total number of available program slots and dividing it by the youth population. This gives us a comparable measure that we can use to compare across different neighborhoods within Boston. Here are the relative slots per youth, broken down by neighborhood and after school and summer programming. We need to be cautious about jumping to conclusions from this data. For example, does this mean that Hyde Park and Roslindale have the least programming available for youth? It may simply mean that we have the lowest level of reported programs for those particular neighborhoods. Either way, this prompts a further look and discussion about the lower ranked neighborhoods to ensure that we are fully collecting data. We can also look at comparisons between the Circle of Promise and the rest of Boston. Note the challenges regarding drawing any kind of boundary, as there are multiple blue dots sitting just outside the Circle of Promise and are not counted in Circle of Promise numbers. Youth travel across so many boundaries in the course of the school year and the course of their day that there are clear limitations to dividing resources geographically. Here is a comparison of slots per youth by program type compared between the Circle of Promise and the rest of Boston. Note that in almost every breakdown, there are more opportunities for youth within the Circle of Promise. Grouped in aggregate, the difference between the Circle of Promise and the rest of Boston is even more dramatic, particularly in after-school opportunities. Circle of Promise has less than half the youth population of the rest of Boston, but nearly the same number of slots. Therefore, there are double the opportunities per youth in after school. Now let's take a look at the number of visitors going to the Boston Navigator website. When we talk about visitors, we're including both youth and families along with program providers. Currently, the way the data is being collected, we cannot separate those two groups. As you look in the chart on the left, the total number of visitors each year are increasing by about 4,000 visitors a year, and 2011 is estimated to have 18,000 visitors. You can also see by this chart that Boston Navigator usage is cyclical on each calendar year, with the busiest period being just before summer as parents and program providers search for and update information. The chart on the right is showing what that translates to in average daily visitors, which usually falls between 50 and 70 visitors depending on if we're at the peak part of the year or not. Where are these visitors coming from? This data, collected from the past two years, shows the source of the traffic. Direct traffic indicates what people remember and type the address for the website indirectly, or what they have bookmarked. Referral traffic means visitors who got to Boston Navigator through a link from another website. Finally, search traffic is visitors coming to Boston Navigator through a search engine such as Google. So I did a test to see how Boston Navigator appears in search results on Google. I used the phrase Boston After School Programs as a generic phrase that perhaps a parent might use to try and find opportunities. And what I discovered was Boston Navigator is nowhere near the top of the search results. In fact, Boston Navigator comes in at number 35, and that is far lower than anything that would be found by a parent. Now say a visitor has successfully made it to the Boston Navigator website. What quality of data would they find? 
this slide lists the most used fields of a program provider's record grouped by different categories. The green indicates what percentage of the time that field is completed, and the red indicates what percentage of the time that field is not completed. And as you can see, there is a large number of fields that have no data currently. In an earlier version of Boston Navigator, more fields were required to be filled out when program providers entered their data, but program provider feedback said that they wanted to have more flexibility. So now that the new system has that flexibility, record completion is showing lots of holes in the data that is collected. Boston Navigator data is also compelling when looked at over periods of time. Here on October 2008 newsletter is comparing the percentage of population of Boston against the percentage of opportunities in after school and summer programs. If we run these same numbers for the data we have in 2011 and compare, we note that, for example, Jamaica Plain has an apparent large spike in the number of opportunities available. Does this mean that Jamaica Plain suddenly had a lot more programs? Perhaps, but it also may mean that we simply got better outreach to those neighborhoods to collect data from Jamaica Plain. Furthermore, another way to look at this data is also where the points have not changed over three years, and the rest of the line is pretty strikingly similar. This may also prompt us to ask, how old is the data that we're looking at in Boston Navigator? And make sure that we are not making assumptions of how current the data is. There are some other challenges in the way the records are set up in the database that powers the Boston Navigator website. Here you have your standard layout showing an organization which is associated with a site, and at that site multiple programs may be run. One common occurrence you might think of would be multiple organizations at the same site providing programs, such as in the school itself, where there are commonly multiple programs. Unfortunately, the way Boston Navigator is set up, only one organization can be associated with a site at a time. Therefore, you can't do this. This requires organizations to create multiple site records. This has created a lot of duplicate addresses in Boston Navigator, and currently, with just under 2,000 address records, a quick check showed that 35% of those records are duplicates. That makes it a lot harder to do measurements on how much activity is happening at a particular location. Another common situation would be an organization that may want to run programs at different locations across the city. However, this also doesn't work because each organization can only be associated with one site. That requires organizations to make multiple records of themselves and therefore is creating a lot of duplicate organization records. One of the most common questions about the out of school time field is where dollars are being spent. This is unfortunately extremely difficult to answer and there is no way to passively collect accurate and comparable information for different organizations. 990 tax forms were never designed to allow for this kind of comparison and much is left open to interpretation as to how an organization splits out different programs and their respective revenues and expenses. Furthermore, the tax forms do not necessarily indicate where the dollars are being spent, and therefore makes it impossible to measure dollars spent in different neighborhoods, or the Circle of Promise, or other designated areas. The only way to collect this information accurately is to ask providers directly, and Boston Navigator currently does this, but at a very limited capacity. I spoke to several leaders of various summer and after school program providers about Boston Navigator, and it is clear that the value of Boston Navigator is not well understood. Hardly anyone saw it as worth their time to use the website. There's a lot of fields for them to fill out, and they get no data back. Clarifying to providers the importance of collecting accurate data in the out of school time field is a critical step in increasing usage of the site. So how can we start fixing all of these issues? I've tried to limit my recommendations to only actions that are easy to implement at little to no cost, most geared to immediately improve the positioning of Boston Navigator as the best way to collect and disseminate information around out of school time in Boston. Fortunately, a lot can be learned by comparing to other websites. Take Amazon, for example, with their opening page that has nearly 100 different links on it. Amazon is letting you easily tap into the wealth of information that isn't contained in their website. 
Imagine if Amazon made their logo extremely large at the top of the page. This would come across as annoying, unnecessary, and a waste of space. Unfortunately, this is exactly the layout that the opening Boston Navigator page has. Furthermore, for all the text on the Boston Navigator homepage, there is only one real web page link and one email address link that is actually clickable and useful. The rest of the space is a waste of screen real estate. With such a huge logo, no wonder hardly anyone notices the tiny links at the very top of the page. Furthermore, this page fails to speak to program providers at all. The only web page link for them is to click the sign in link at the top right corner. Even after logging in, there is no explanation as to the importance of Boston Navigator or what Boston Navigator can do for them. Contrast this to the Cultural Data Project website. The Cultural Data Project collects data from different cultural and arts programs across the country, asking them to enter data about themselves and then sharing this data with key stakeholders. Their opening page instantly addresses these stakeholders with specific links on the right side with content catered to each audience. Furthermore, the Cultural Data Project goes on to explain their data collection process in detail, as well as their reporting capabilities. They offer no less than 75 distinct reports on data. This is where Boston Navigator needs to step it up. 75 reports may not be necessary, but clear communication that the data is used and is useful to multiple parties is critical. Here's a look at how an individual program record looks in Boston Navigator. Note all the wasted space due to low percentages of completed fields. This makes the program record low in data density and therefore difficult to read. But what if we could re-envision this to be more friendly to parents looking for these opportunities? By hiding non-completed fields, suddenly you have a much more user-friendly record to read. The user reviews now are appearing on your first screen, and we've also added a picture to the top right. To date, Boston Navigator has nearly 100,000 slots for youth to engage in Boston, but does not have a single picture of kids and programs. This emotional description of a program is critical for a parent's understanding of what a program does. In fact, this program record is starting to look rather familiar. It starts to look a lot like a Yelp page. We need to create the program records to appear much like this, such that a program is much more likely to link to their program record. You might recall that currently Boston Navigator is ranked number 35 in Google search results. The number one way to increase that ranking is to increase the number of other websites that link to Boston Navigator. If we can push individual program providers to link to their program pages, that will drastically help the exposure of Boston Navigator in search results. Let's take a look at what a program provider deals with when they have to enter and update their own record. Boston Navigator has already received the feedback that you can't have all the fields required in a database. But when you look at this screen, you have no understanding of what's more important or what's less important information. The coloration of data fields, along with explanatory help bubbles, would allow a finer detailed explanation of what we are looking to collect in terms of data and why it's needed. For example, we could be much more explicit in asking about cost data, both cost to a participant and the cost of a participant per program, and then we can accurately determine where the dollars are going. Another critical audience that we need to recognize are referrers. Referrers are able to send an out-of-school time opportunity to a youth by email, simultaneously notifying the provider to follow up with the youth. We need to continue to train referrers and get them to be the messengers for Boston Navigator. For example, we need to create the environment where a program provider gets a call from a referrer who asks them why they're not listed on Boston Navigator and then prompts the provider to engage with the site. As long as Boston After School and Beyond staff are going after program providers to update their data, Boston Navigator will never be able to be self-sustainable. Further thought needs to be put into how Boston Navigator data is shared. What groups would most benefit from seeing this kind of information? Choices need to be made around what are sustainable practices for report generation and what frequency reports are released. It is imperative, however, that data be shared at some level with some standard frequency. 
In the case of this newsletter from three years ago, it took a staff member a lot of time to compile this information, and then it was only for a specific audience. So what are some newer ways that we might be able to share data more interactively? There are many creative ways to share information that go far beyond the abilities of simply manually generating traditionally written reports. For example, interactive data sharing is a way to make a complex data set accessible to everyone, allowing a user to customize the data to give them the information they need. This demonstration lets a program provider compare themselves against similar program providers operating in the same space and program type. The interactivity of the data promotes exploration and minimizes the amount of work required in manually collecting data by Boston Navigator staff. With this work in place, providers should now have a clear understanding that Boston Navigator is more than just a place you enter data. Data sharing suddenly becomes information providers can take action with, and this system goes far beyond just finding kids for your program. Participation in Boston Navigator strengthens the voice of the out-of-school time field. So now we've addressed a lot of the issues with program providers understanding the value of Boston Navigator. However, there's still work we can do to increase the number of families accessing Boston Navigator. This chart shows the top 10 referring websites to Boston Navigator sorted by total number of visitors actually referred in the blue bar. The other measures are measures that indicate how the visitors behave once they've arrived at Boston Navigator. The longer the colored bars, the better. This lets us see that, for example, Boston Youth Zone is not only sending us lots of visitors, but they're sending us visitors who are deeply engaging Boston Navigator. Also note the visitors from Google are mostly first-time visitors, and they aren't spending much time on the site at all. Most interesting are Boston Public Schools and Boston Youth Sports. They aren't sending a lot of people to Boston Navigator, but it is abundantly clear that these are the people we want. They're spending a large amount of time engaging the site. This lets us strategically target those organizations and see how we might increase our exposure on their sites to continue to send quality visitors our way. When visitors do get to Boston Navigator, what exactly are they doing? How are they searching for programs? A quick glance at this chart might suggest that search is the most effective method for finding programs. However, this data simply indicates which method is being used the most and does not necessarily reflect any measure of each method's relative effectiveness. In fact, on April 27th, the front page of Boston Navigator was redesigned, which emphasized the search link more than the other methods. And you can see by the data in the chart that that drastically changed user behavior. This is proof of the importance of a well-designed home page for a website. Using Google Analytics, we can work to measure which search method is actually the most effective and then emphasize that method accordingly on the Boston Navigator site. First, you need to define success, and in this case, we'll consider a visitor pulling up a program record's details as an indicator of a successful search. The numbers listed with each search method are the number of times that method was used in the past five months. The search success numbers in this slide are imaginary and shown only to prove the point that we may very well discover that a less popular search method is actually the most effective. In this dummy example, directory searches have now proven to be the most effective. And we should work to emphasize the best search method to maximize the number of satisfied visitors. We have now explored areas to address both for program providers and for families. With all these changes implemented, program providers will now have a much better understanding of the value of Boston Navigator, families are able to more effectively find the programs they need for their children, and supporters of Boston Navigator are able to gain insight from the quality data collected from the field. If you are interested in learning more about Boston Navigator, I encourage you to visit bostonnavigator.org or contact Boston After School and Beyond. Thank you.